Hi y'all and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to be going over the 501st Battle Force for Star Wars Legion. My nails is a little stuffed up so I apologize. Fall allergies are in full swing. But let's jump right into it. The Republic has been seeing a resurgence in top placements in Legion recently. A lot of the strength comes from Anakin Gunline. The current meta dominating the Republic includes this Battle Force as you can get an Anakin Gunline out of it. So let's go into what makes the 501st Battle Force so good, especially compared to what it was before. The special rules for the Battle Force are very simple. You can bring a strike team for each normal ARC Trooper unit in your army. These still count towards your rank requirement slots. The Battle Force was originally considered very weak, and these rules are part of that reason. Unlike a lot of other Battle Forces, they don't have anything super strong or special going for them. On to the allowed units, it limits you to clones only. Losing out on Republic operatives does lose some easy victory points you can get by taking Pad, May, maybe R2-D2, etc. Phase 2 units are very expensive for core. They're actually the most baseline expensive core unit. And while they are red saves, they're not necessarily always worth the price. However, the big shining thing that makes this so good are the ARC Troopers, which recently got a buff in a points nerf for reduction. The ATRT is okay, but the Bark Speeder is also very, very good. And no one really ever takes the LAAT slash LE, but it is still nice to be able to take it. Also, Echo and Fives are both some very good unique upgrades you can take as well. The rank requirements are the most limiting part of this force. You have to take at least one ATRT or Bark Speeder and Arc Trooper, which means you do need to build around that. This means that originally, before all the changes to points, the builds you could take were just not the optimal Republic builds. The Phase 2 clones and the ARC Troopers were not necessarily the best things you used to be able to bring. However, with recent changes, that has changed, as is pretty much the whole reason I am making this video. So let's get into the nitty gritty. Why is this Battle Force so strong now when it was ranked as one of the lowest strength ones at the time of its release? There's several reasons for this. Running Anakin with Forest Barrier and Exemplar helps to keep buffing the already tanky red save clone. Full ARC Trooper units are really good after their point reduction. They are now just 6 points more than Phase 2 clones and are stacked with keywords, which means bringing 4 of them is useful and worth it a lot of the time. The Bark Speeder is the best vehicle the Republic has access to right now. Though that seems a little weird, it is true. The Saber Tank is very good as well, but for the price, the Bark Speeder is fantastic. Phase 2 medics do a lot to heal your troops and makes them so much better as well, and all of your units have access to that medic. The command cards also add a ton to the force, and Rex, Anakin are both really good, along with the generic clone commander choices for the Republic, probably some of their better commanders in general. So what makes the ARC troopers so good now compared to before? Well, first, they saw a buff in going down to 66 points from 72. And as you can see, the, for 66 points, you get so many useful keywords, and surprisingly, a lot of good weapons. The hand blasters and the blaster rifle give you a lot of choices from the variety of ranges to put down a lot of good heavy fire. Adding in fives to spread orders around, or echo to give reliable one, critical one, lethal one, and immune deflect, along with two red dice added to the attack pool, is fantastic. They also have a unique upgrade card that gives immune deflect, so they can be built to counter force users, which is good. The current meta force users are fantastic, and well use of them is kind of key to success, but having two to three units on the field that have weapons that can just ignore the biggest defense a force user have, along with sharpshooter making sure you can reduce cover, Tactical giving you aim rerolls, like it's it's fantastic. They also have easy access to a jetpack upgrade for 10 points, which allows them to just ignore terrain, which is always a good improvement to any unit. All this and more has kind of moved the arcs into a more fun spotlight, and being able to bring four of them again is fantastic, and it's part of the reason the battle force has just gotten so much better. That, combined with everything else we've talked about before, is what has brought the 501st to the forefront of everything. Now let's head into the command cards and see why they are so good. Lead from the front is the first command card for the 501st Legion. And it 
allows you to give out a decent amount of aim or dodge tokens, as a friendly commander can choose three other friendly units within range one of it and choose them to gain an aim or a dodge token. For a one pip, this is extremely strong, and it is extremely useful for the Republic, who need access to these token generation methods. Tactical Planning is another fantastic card. After a friendly heavy or special forces unit performs an attack against a unit that has a face-up order token, you shuffle that token back into an its order pool. Considering you're going to be bringing four arc troopers and two heavies, this is a great way to mess with enemy activation order and kind of shut down the orders they've given. I absolutely love it, and it is a really, really good card. And Leaders of the 501st is another Anakin buff card on top of his buff cards as well, and it lets you roll red dice to clear suppression. This is absolutely fantastic, as it prevents suppression tokens from building up on your units for too much, and it can also help get rid of the suppression tokens on Anakin as well. As this as if this buff card is placed on a Captain Rex instead of an Anakin, well then, you're pretty much set. Now onto the general wrap-up, this battle force definitely shows how a few changes can shoot something up to the top. The Republic is a lot more fun to play now, and I myself will be starting my dive into them with my friendly local game store's Black Friday sale. Now I apologize for such a short video today. These allergies are kicking my butt, and I knew I could not record for that long as I'm already kind of starting to lose my voice at the end of this recording. Next week, we'll be hopefully jumping into a slightly longer video I have set up. And now that my personal life has calmed down, I really do want to try getting two videos out a week. Hopefully, we'll see soon. But soon, things have changed enough where I should be able to focus more on YouTube as a fun little hobby. I hope you have a wonderful day, all, and I'll see you all next week.